Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today, I have an upload for you guys. I know it's been a while, I apologize that it's been a few weeks since my last upload. I, to be completely honest, just got into this weird funk where I just was not really motivated to do a whole lot. I wasn't in a very social mood. I wasn't really in a video making mood. I don't know what it was. I think it was just 2020's crap kind of just hit me for the last couple of weeks of August. But what I ended up doing was I just kind of focused on reading as much as I could, getting a job, and, you know, just kind of taking care of myself. And it resulted in me reading 36 books for the month of August. Even though I did some traveling and a lot of stuff, I just was, like, so into reading that it's kind of all I did. Um, and I have a lot of books to talk about and share with you, especially because what helped me kind of get out of this funk is that I logged on to YouTube, and I hadn't actually been on YouTube for a little while. And I have over a thousand subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you all so much for subscribing to my channel, interacting with my videos, liking them, commenting. It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience, and it just seriously has made my week. I was just absolutely thrilled and just immediately was like, I'm back to making videos. So stay tuned on Friday. I'm going to be doing my bookshelf tour because that's my most requested video. I know a lot of people have been eagerly awaiting it. So I'm going to be doing that uploading on Friday. And I'm also going to be doing a giveaway to kind of celebrate that. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's get into the meat of this video, which for August, I did a couple of challenges for myself. One was to make sure that I finished the Dark Tower series, which I did. And another, this it's kind of an unintentional challenge, but I ended up realizing I had a bunch of apocalyptic stories on my TBR, which I love anything that is post-apocalyptic or apocalyptic in nature. And especially with these books, some of them are sort of unusual or unique takes on an apocalypse, pretty much. In fact, a couple of them I wouldn't even necessarily say are like completely apocalyptic, but they're, they have elements of an apocalypse, like if the thing that was happening progressed, it ultimately would result in the end of the world. So that's why I included it on this list, as you'll see there's a couple that are like a little iffy on that, but I think it was a really fun project. I read 10 of them in 10 days, and for the most part they were all pretty good. I didn't have any one star of all of these, which was nice. I only ended up with one five star, but because I read a lot of apocalyptic stories, I tend to be a little bit more critical of them just because I have a lot to compare them to. But anyway, let's get into it. I'm going to do this video just like I did with my thriller video that I uploaded back in January. So I'm going to rank them and kind of go from the worst to the best and give you guys sort of like a mini overview of each book. So really quick, the 10 books we'll be talking about today. Zone 1 by Colson Whitehead, which I gave 2 out of 5 stars. The Book of M by Ping Shepard gave 2.75 out of 5 stars. The Age of Miracles by Karen Thompson Walker, 3.25 out of 5 stars. The Brief History of the Dead by Kevin Brockmeyer, 3.25 out of 5 stars. The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker as well, this was 3.75 out of 5. The Absence of Sparrows by Kurt Kirchmeier, 4 out of 5 stars. The Night Parade by Ronald Malfi, 4 out of 5 stars. Severance by Ling Ma, 4 out of 5 stars. Afterland by Lauren Bukes, 4.25 out of 5 stars. And last but not least, Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton, 5 out of 5 stars. So for Zone 1, this is an apocalypse that focuses on zombies. So this is actually takes place a few years after zombies wiped out a good chunk of humanity and humanity's trying to come back our main character he's sort of like your average everyday dude and that's kind of how he survives for the most part is because he's just like sort of the epitome of like maybe not mediocrity but sort of just being completely average like there's nothing special about him there's nothing extraordinary about him he is just your average everyday joe and that's kind of how he survives and that's how he uses pretty much uses that to his advantage as a skill and to be completely honest this book 
I, I went into it with an open mind. I do know it has a fairly low rating on Goodreads, but for me, I always like to try and read books no matter what because I like to form my own opinion. There have been some really good books that I've discovered that have a fairly low rating on Goodreads, such as like I'm thinking of ending things because it's kind of a polarizing story. You either love it or you don't. So I was kind of wondering if this was going to be the case. And I do know somebody I follow who really liked this book, so I wanted to give it a shot. Now for me, the reason why I didn't care for this that much is because I, when it comes down to it, I prefer story and characters over good writing. I appreciate good writing, and as somebody who wants to be a writer myself, um, I do love pretty words, but there has to be substance behind it, and I truly love stories the most when it comes down to it. Like, I'd rather read a poorly written book that has an amazing story and really cool characters as opposed to a beautifully written book that's just kind of doesn't have a lot of story. And this one, it just completely, for the vast majority of it, I was kind of bored. And that doesn't usually happen to me too much. I can tend to plow through a lot of stories. And it was beautifully written, but it, it by the time the story progressed, because it takes place over only a couple of days, and it, towards, like, I'd maybe say the last third of the book, I started getting a little bit more interested, which is why I gave it two out of five instead of one out of five. But it just wasn't wasn't very gripping and the pretty writing wasn't enough to carry it for me so unfortunately this didn't work very well but I, I still recommend maybe giving it a shot if you're looking for a you know if you really like good writing and a literary take on a zombie apocalyptic tale you may want to give it a shot however I would say try The Reapers Are the Angels by Alden Bell I would recommend that one over this one because that one has a literary quality as well but has a far more interesting story. Next one, I actually would say this one is probably my most disappointing book on this list because I expected to love the story and unfortunately it just didn't quite work for me. So The Book of M, it is a also a beautifully written tale. We follow several different characters. Main characters, they're is a couple. There's Max and Ori. Max is the female um, lead and Ori is the male lead and they are trying to survive in a world where people start to lose their shadows and when they lose their shadows after a certain period of time they start to lose their memories to the point where they start to forget who they are, loved ones, how the world works, and slowly you know, they just lose all sense of who they are and then die, usually because they forget to breathe, forget to eat, if something happens. And at some point, Ori and Max, they had gone to, like, they basically got stranded at this wedding and then they were living there for, like, about two years and then Max loses her shadow. And so she takes off because she doesn't want Ori to be around when she starts to lose who she is, especially because in this book... Um, when you lose your shadow and you lose your memories, you actually start to alter the world around you and weird things start to happen. Like, at the very beginning of the book, um, Max forgets that deer uh, have antlers on their head and instead she remembers them having wings on their head. So all of a sudden there's this deer walking around with wings on its head. And, and other things like that. It's a really cool concept. And I would say if... If you asked me the first like half of this book what I was going to rate this, I was thinking it's going to be probably a four and a half or a five star read for the first half. I was like really hooked and I thought it was well written, I thought it was very creative, I liked the characters, it's a very diverse book, there's a lot going for it. But it gets to the point where it starts to go from being this like apocalyptic tale with like magical realism elements to it to like a full-blown kind of like fantasy dystopia something and it's a little jarring when that happens and I also felt like it was a bit too long there ends up being like several different narrative voices in this I really think that there should have been two maybe three um, and they're just like a lot of people and their perspectives and a couple just didn't seem to really add to it and there are a lot of things that happened towards the end of the book that I just felt like kind of were kind of unfortunate and didn't really 
make the story all that powerful and kind of weaken the story. And I just, yeah, at a certain point, I just thought that it, it did get to be a little much where I really did feel like all of a sudden I was reading a fantasy story and, you know, I was kind of expecting it to have a little bit more of a basis in reality. And I'm somebody who can suspend disbelief. Like, if it's fiction, for the most part, I'm like, I'm hooked. Like, you can convince me that, you know, the Loch Ness Monster exists if it's done well in a book, but, um, I don't know, something about this just happened in the second half. No, it's so unfortunate because I was really enjoying it, but it just kind of fell flat for me, so unfortunately that's the highest that I could give this book. But I do know some people do like it, and it is, you know, it does have a literary quality to it. I just wish that it was shorter, and there's some more explanation to things. Like, there weren't really a lot of, like, rules and rhyme or reason to a lot of what happened. It just kind of, everything went towards the end, so... Anyway, that was the Book of M. So definitely most disappointing because like I I thought I was going to really like this one. Next up's the Age of Miracles. So this one has been around for a while. Um, I've had it on my TBR for several years um, because it sounded really interesting to me. So in this story, we have an 11 year old girl who she and her family are just living in California, and one day it's announced that the world is starting to slow down its rotation, basically, so that the days are going to be getting longer and longer. And it's a really interesting concept because I feel like the author does a pretty good job showing the impacts of what would happen. And also, it's another very well-written tale, some very beautiful quotes, and you really care for your main character, and, like, it's a fast, fast read. I got through this in, like, half a day, but the, you, first off, if you're going to read this, I do recommend kind of suspending your disbelief and just don't really get behind the science of this because I don't think it's really well developed. You don't know why the Earth's rotation is slowing down. You can't really get into the physics of it or really overanalyze it both what's happening with the planet but also happening with people so I just recommend don't even think about it because it may impact your enjoyment of the story um, but I think for me the big thing with this is that you know taking that out um, the ending it just kind of ended and I also felt like I don't know there's just something missing with this story where it just kind of felt like main character was just kind of like talking about things and it was done well but it was sort of lacking in some of the substance that I was hoping from an apocalyptic story. Um, you get to see what's happening with the family but there was just something something missing with this and it, it's not a bad bad book. I do recommend it but if you're looking for good apocalyptic stories I would say this is more of like a coming of age story where you've got your main character and dealing with middle school like she had to deal with a lot of middle school issues and friendship issues and all of that but um, some of the like world building of like what was going on some parts were done well other parts weren't so that's why this one was it wasn't bad but it wasn't as good as the other Karen Thompson Walker novel that I'll be sharing with you in just a moment. So, Brief History of the Dead. This is my favorite concept of all of these books. This is my... I just think this is a brilliant concept, and it, I still am thinking about it, and just, I think it's very cool. So in this book, you pretty much have this city. When you die, you go to the city. Um, your passage will be different for every human being. Some people, um, like, wake up in a desert and have to travel to the city. Some people, like, live an entire life and then get to the city. Some people, like, wake up in a, like, dark ocean and then travel to the city. But however you get there, you end up getting there. And the city is just filled with people who are still remembered back on Earth. And they're usually in the city for about 60-ish years. It really varies depending on how many people you knew back on Earth but you disappear as soon as the last living human being who remembered you dies. So as soon as that happens, poof, you're gone. And cities just kind of functioning 
normally until all of a sudden a bunch of people just disappear because something is happening back on Earth, basically, like in the living world. And they're trying to figure out what is going on. At the same time, or so this pretty much is like two stories in one, you've got that component of the story. The other component is following this girl, or sorry, not girl, a woman named Laura, and she is on an Antarctic expedition and she's trying to figure out what's happening. She ends up by herself and is trying to travel to get some help when she realizes her companions haven't returned because they haven't been able to get in contact with the outside world. And then you figure out why the two stories are connected and it goes from there. Great concept. Um, execution was a little weak, I would say. It's, again, this is probably a theme of this video, beautifully written. Story could have been developed a little bit more. I think I actually found myself liking the uh, sections with Laura. Like, I felt her story was more interesting, especially like the idea of being stranded um, in the Antarctic during an apocalypse, basically. And like, her story was really interesting. Her character, I liked her character and her observations. And you know, she, those sections were just a lot more interesting to me. Because the city was just kind of basic. And I felt like so much more could have been expanded on. And I mean, pretty much, like, you die, you go to the city, and you basically, like, live your normal life up until you disappear. And there wasn't a lot of world building with the city. I felt like it could have just been expanded upon more. Or, if the author didn't do that, then s shorten this to a novella length might have been better as well, because just tighten it up. But as, there were a few uh, chunks, especially towards the end, I felt, like, dragged on a little bit. Um, where I'm like, okay, I already know what's gonna happen, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, we're not getting there. So, so that was my issue with it. It's still a good, interesting read. I think this would be a wonderful book club read, because you can just talk about this. Um, especially there's one section in the book where there's a character who's, like, trying to calculate how many people he knows back on Earth, and it was a huge number, because he was trying to think about, like, you know, just not just family, friends, but just going down the line of people you've met, and it just makes you think how many times you've stumbled upon somebody who may remember you for the rest of their lives, and you might not remember them, or vice versa. So, very cool book, great for discussions, you know, worth a read, I would say, just know that it's not, it wasn't a new favorite of mine, pretty much. The Dreamers, Karen Thompson Walker. So I read both of her books during this binge, and I liked this one a little bit better. So this one is, I would say, slightly less an apocalyptic tale in a way, because in The Age of Miracles, the whole world is impacted, as opposed to in this book, it's more of the viral outbreak is happening. So there's this small town in California where there's this outbreak that happens at this college where people start falling asleep, and they can't be woken up. First person who catches this dies, and immediately people are trying to figure out what is happening as more and more people are just falling asleep and they don't know how it's spread. If it's viral, what's happening. At the beginning it's just kind of hitting this town, especially around like the college, in the college and around the college and it's focusing on all of the people in the town get impacted. So with this story, so in the Age of Miracles it's told um, from the point of view of one main character. This one, it's more of a bird's eye view of what is happening. So you don't really get attached to any one individual character. There's a wide cast of characters and a lot of different people. And, you know, some of them you like, some of them you don't. So I think that's both a strength and a weakness of the book because there are some very interesting characters, but there would be an occasional character where I didn't really care what their story was. And so I'd kind of just, you know, hope that their story their section of the chapter would wrap up so I could get back to somebody I was really interested in. And and I liked it for the most part. Um, I thought that the outbreak situation was really well done, especially reading this story during, you know, a pandemic, a global pandemic that we're going through right now. It felt very realistic. And I think that the author did a pretty good job researching that and how a uh, you know, a quarantine would ha happen with a small town and how people would react. It felt very real and, you know, I thought she did a good job. 
I think with this one, um, I can't mention one thing that bothered me about this book without going to spoiler territory, so I'm not going to mention that, but I think the, the thing with this is, again, just the, you don't really spend a lot of time with one individual character, which is fine, but not all the storylines were strong. There are a couple that were a little bit on the weak side, and also some very good writing in this, but it did have its some of its weak moments. I, in particular, felt like, again, it kind of resolved too easily. Um, it just fell a little flat, just like the Age of Miracles, where it just kind of ended, in a way. Um, and so that was, I think, probably my biggest criticism of the book. But it's really cool, and, you know, I always like this, like, a pandemic or um, outbreak story, and I do also enjoy a story told from a bird's eye point of view from time to time. I think that can be a very cool way to tell a story. So, did like this. I do recommend it. 3.75 out of 5 is still a pretty solid rating. So we're getting into the books that are, you know, are, are decent books. So it's worth checking out. Just know that if you are somebody who really needs to be attached to characters, this may not be the one for you just because it, you don't really spend a lot of time with any one person. And... If you want to know what the spoiler is that really bothered me, you know, you can message me or something. So, there's that one. Next one's The Absence of Sparrow. So, I was actually sent this one by the author, which was really cool. So, hopefully Kurt is checking out this video. This one is middle grade. And I, I read middle grade from time to time. I don't read a ton of it, but I am always wanting to check it out. This one is very interesting. I thought that the atmosphere was super well done and the concept very cool. So pretty much there's this small town and there are these two brothers and they are, you know, just playing one day and all of a sudden there's this like freak storm that just blows into town and it turns certain people into basically black glass and then the storm blows away and it turns out that's happening all around the world. And what happens with some of the people is that they end up shattering and then they're just, you know, in broken pieces. After a period of time, a couple of them come back, but they are totally messed up, completely like out of it, not functioning really, very, very traumatized. And it's kind of trying to figure out what is happening and if there's a way to prevent this from happening. As these storms, they really just swoop in without notice, without warning, do damage and then go out and then come back in and then at certain points a couple of people related to the boys that they love and care about end up getting turned into glass and the story goes from there and for most part I thought this was a pretty solid story especially because this is the author's debut novel and you can also tell that the author really loves birds because birds play a big role in this story um like I felt like I learned a ton of bird facts from this and like the main character he was very adorable and you know kind of was like a little bit geeky nerdy soft boy I would say because he likes to you know spend time with his mom drinking tea and birding and you know he, cute, cute kid a little bit different than his brother his older brother is kind of a bit of a jerk sometimes um, but it's actually it is fairly dark for a kid's book I would say because it gets into some like very morally gray questionable territory about what you would do in a situation and I thought that was really neat that the author brought that up so I thought that was fantastic. I do think that a few things weren't fully explained properly and like the ending did kind of feel a bit rushed. Endings can just be hard to do I think in stories in general sometimes you just can't really quite nail it and I think with this one I don't know if it's being set up for a sequel because I could see there being a sequel to this um, but I think that there, there are a couple things that I wanted a little bit more resolution on and it, you know, got to a point where I'm like, oh, there's not much left of this, what's going to happen? Um, but especially for a debut novel, I thought it was really well done and it's going to, it's not going to be for everybody. There are a couple, I would say, maybe religious elements to this. I don't want to go into any more detail. I wouldn't say this is a religious book, but there are a few religious elements that some people might not like. So just know that but if you're looking for a fun middle grade that has very good atmosphere and you know a great main character this is a good one next one the night parade so ronald malfi i 
tend to enjoy his books. He's a very solid horror writer, especially like December Park and Bone White were probably my two favorites of his. And I wanted to check out this book. I've had it on my TBR for a long time, so I finally picked it up and it's a pretty good one. So this book follows, this is another like plague outbreak story. Um, what's happening in this story is that there's this disease, it's called Wanderer's Folly, and it pretty much attacks your brain and causes you to really hallucinate and practically lose touch of reality and bleed, and your just brain turns to mush and then you die. And it's very contagious and it's spreading throughout the world, and it's focusing mainly on the United States, specifically back east and then some other parts. Um, but is following a father and his daughter. His You find out what happened, but the story begins when they're on the run. They're on the run from the government, and you find out what happens, but there's something very special about the daughter, and I liked her character. She was a very cute and like very realistic eight, almost nine-year-old, and the father-daughter relationship was very sweet, I would say. Um, i kind of a sucker for like good family stories and family relationships and friends and stuff so um but I think with this book really I liked it because I enjoy like stories where there's a decent amount of traveling they end up going kind of across America running into all kinds of folks and um encountering various people some are bad some are fine some are pretty good and objectively like so basically if I didn't read as much apocalyptic stories as I do this would probably actually be a five out of five star read however because I've read so much in this genre and because I also read a lot of horror um it was very predictable so that's why I knocked off the entire star even though pretty much the story is very good the characters are good like it's a perfectly fine book I just I kind of called almost every single thing that happened and it's just because I feel like I've just read so much of this that it's like for whatever reason it was just hard to surprise me but this is something I would recommend to most people unless you've you're like in the same boat as me and you're kind of like oh you know I've read so much what's new under the sun and you're kind of like I don't know if there is anything new um so that that's the one issue I think with this but on that great great story especially if you want to read a a pandemic tale during a pandemic, this would be a good, solid choice. Next one is Severance by Ling Ma. This one, this one was pretty good, and I I definitely enjoyed a lot of the social commentary in this one, so I would say this one has, at times, kind of a humorous bent to it, definitely a satirical bent to it. Um, it follows our main character as she is in New York City, and dealing with, like, work and being Asian American and being an office worker when this disease called Shen fever hits and she's still working and trying to just figure some stuff out while basically the apocalypse is happening and a lot of people are dying and dealing with that. So this one, I read it towards the end of my binge. This was the second to last book that I read and I I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, it's well written and the characters are pretty good. It took me a while to get into it. I, I don't know why. Um, I think maybe because I'd read several like very fast paced books right before this and also the um, transition from very serious books towards this book which is supposed to have a little bit more humor into it was maybe a little jarring for myself. So I might actually reread this at some point in the future to see if I'm change my mind about it a little bit um, but for the most part once I got into it it's a pretty fast-paced book and again if you're looking for something that you know kind of captures maybe the millennial experience I'm a millennial and I don't really like working office jobs I prefer more active jobs or like you know teaching or working with animals working with books that's kind of what I do um, so just if you want to explore that, this would be a good book to check out. The last two, so 
got Afterland. Afterland, this was one of the few on this list that was actually on my TBR for the month of August. My mom got me this book and I got into it and I, so this one has a lot of mixed reviews coming out. People for the most part are either loving it or hating it and I, I didn't even check any of the Goodreads ratings or anything like that before I dug into this book. I, I liked it. Um, I think that this book brings up a lot of really interesting observations and ideas. So pretty much in this book um, you follow a mother and her son and they are trying to essentially escape America. So we have Cole and her son Miles and they escape after uh, pretty much Cole's sister wanted to take Miles and like sell him basically because almost all of the males, like biological males, have died in the world. So there are very few males left and that causes a lot of issues and as a biological male, um, Miles is prized for anything from basically being able to produce sperm to, you know, just being a surrogate son or something like that. So when Cole and Miles escape, they are crossing, basically crossing across America to catch a boat to get off America's soil because they want to get back to South Africa. And the story itself is pretty basic. So that's why I did knock a little bit off from the book. But I think kind of like with um, Survivor Song and some other books, sometimes simplicity is best because you can kind of absorb what's happening around the characters and get into the apocalyptic world. It was really interesting to see a lot of the ideas that this author had about what would happen if most of the men disappeared and at times it's very heartbreaking because we all, you know, either we're men or we have men that we love or, you know, if you lose half your population it's gonna be very traumatic. Like, I know for me, I have three brothers and my dad and male cousins and it would just be awful. So I was just like thinking that the entire time, like how sad it would be. Um, and it's interesting too, because she, it's not all doom and gloom, but it's not all sunshine and daisies and rainbows either, which I think I have read at least one or two books about like men disappearing or like short stories maybe of men disappearing and people thinking that a world without men would be better. And I don't think that's the case. And the author also doesn't say, like, it's the worst, like, you know, society's in shambles per se. Like, it's definitely been hurt, and there are a lot of, like, women who have to step up and try to take roles that were held by men in, like, what's happening, um, and, like, the trauma of losing people. And I, th I felt like she did a pretty realistic job of it and tried to do a very fair job, where she's not all, like, trying to make it seem like... I, I mean, she even has some societies like in Africa that did pretty well because they were matriarchal. Um, like some countries did fine, some didn't, some were more impacted, others weren't. And I just thought that was really cool and I thought she did a really good job. There's sections of this that have like blog uh, postings that end up in here, like some newspaper clippings, like there's like a lot to this that I thought like added to like the realism factor of this so I thought that was really interesting and very unique um, and for the most part I was hooked from start to finish and there are a couple things that I kind of thought were going to happen and I do think that the the climax of the novel was a little weak and a little rushed but it was still really interesting I I liked it and not everyone's going to like it a lot of people are probably gonna have some thoughts and feelings about it but I think that's good. I think when a book makes you think and really think and it sticks with you then it's a successful book so I definitely recommend checking this out. Don't get scared off by the mixed reviews just give it a shot even if you don't end up liking it I think you'll still like aspects of it so check it out. And the last but certainly not least is my favorite one which was Hollow Kingdom. This one I I don't think I've had 
a funny, like, laugh out loud experience with a book in a very long time. Like, I know that, um, like, uh, Hyperbole and a Half and, like, Douglas Adams books, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, those two, like, make me actually laugh out loud, but it doesn't happen a whole lot because I tend not to read purely comedy. It's just not something that I usually gravitate towards because I like darker books. I like a little bit more serious books and I think oftentimes comedy doesn't age very well. This one was so funny, so witty. I was like laughing the entire time except for during the more serious parts, but I was hooked like full on. This is my kind of humor and I will say that humor is very subjective so you know not everyone's going to like this book. Some people may find the humor annoying or like the characters annoying or something, but it worked for me. I thought it was really funny. So pretty much we follow um, a crow. His name is ST, and I'm not going to say what his real name is because I don't want YouTube to get mad at me, but um, he's ST, and he's a domesticated crow, and he's living in Seattle, which I also have to say that probably added to my experience of this book because I could picture where everything was happening in this book and it just really connected to me on that level because um, I live in the Seattle area. And uh, it's ST's experience dealing with the zombie apocalypse when his kind of owner, master guy, Jim, he ends up, his eyeball fall, falls out, he ends up turning into basically a zombie and at a certain point tries to attack him and then ST ends up taking Dennis the Bloodhound and they go off to figure out what if there's anything they can do to help the humans which he calls mofos <laughs> which I think is hilarious um, and it's so creative I, I honestly would probably describe this book as like a combination of Watership Down because you've got the animal talking elements and animal society elements with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because you've got that really well done humor element to it mixed with like some uh, I feel like Jonathan Mayberry does a really good job with um, zombie apocalypse world building. So we've got that, like I would say probably those three books kind of combined into this, yet this is also its completely own thing. It's very, very unique. And I was just enthralled by this tale. Maybe it's because I'm biased and I'm an animal lover who also just loves creative world building and zombie apocalypses. And of course, zombie like like zombies taking over Seattle, and there's so much so much going on to this, and it was very unique. I don't really feel like I've read a book like this. I can't really compare it to anything else. I mean, there are a couple books I say have elements that it borrowed from, but it's its own unique thing, and I was hooked. And I really want to read more work by this author, especially if she was able to, uh, you know, either have characters in this book and branch off into like a companion book or like something else but I thought she did a great job I had a very fun time and what's kind of funny about this book is like I hauled this like months ago I bought it and I'm like I'm gonna read it and then I didn't end up reading it and I finally got to it and I'm just like dang I should have read this way sooner because I loved it so hope you guys give it a shot and if you're like in a mood for just a creative, fun, unique apocalypse experience, or if you want a kind of funny book that's sort of like maybe a horror or comedy, um, this will be right up your alley. So, recommend it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed. And please like, comment, rate, and subscribe. I will be uploading some more videos in the next couple of days. Stay tuned for that bookshelf tour that's coming out on Friday, and I will talk to you guys later. Let me know what, if you've been reading any apocalyptic stories recently, let me know if you you know, have any that you want to recommend to me, or if you have any questions about these books, or if you've read any of them, what did you think of them? So, thank you so much, and have a great day.